The Capitol Police and the Missouri Highway Patrol are currently investigating the incident. That idea eventually led him to this. I'm downtown in front of Columbia's newest and brightest hotspot. He refused to go on camera with us about his conviction, but is facing a possible eight years in federal prison, as well as $500,000 in fines. But here at Hy-Vee, the non-organic version was the cheapest of the three. I ran into a worker whose tent was completely bashed in by a tree. Our team coverage begins with KMU8's Emily Spain, who got the details of these crimes at this afternoon's press conference. Emily. The Big 12 will remain intact, at least for now. Reporting live in Columbia, Caitlin Alexander, KMU8 News. There's no uh, sidewalks whatsoever. Stevens Lake Park is a great place to be on a warm summer's day. That is, if you can get to it. When we want to go down there, we can't get down there because we have to ride across the grass and my friend's wheelchair, he, he, it won't make it. It's because it is difficult to get across the sand. The actual pond area is, is difficult to get into. That's why the city is moving forward with plans to improve wheelchair accessibility at the park. Columbia's Parks and Recreation will install a six-foot wide wheelchair accessibility ramp across the beach to make it easier to get to the water. The $10,000 needed for this overhaul comes from Get About Columbia. 5000 of that is expected to be used at the beach. The remaining 5000 making sidewalks more wheelchair friendly. But that doesn't help members of the wheelchair community who want better access available right now. I just wish it would get done a lot faster so I could get my, my exercises done. For now, it looks like rainwater and others will just have to wait until next spring. Caitlin Alexander, KOMU8 News, Columbia. Can you hear me, old house? 2402 Murphy was supposed to be Laura Tyler's new home. She planned to move in with her friend Teresa Long, May 22, 2011. This is your house? Tyler was walking to Long's house when she noticed the sky darkening, the wind picking up, and hail starting to litter the streets. Oh, holding on to a pole. After taking shelter on a stranger's porch for the duration of the storm, Tyler walked to Long's house, or what was left of it. It's gone. Long's house was in shambles, but the storm cost Tyler everything she owned. She had nothing. When she got to my house that night, she had nothing. She and Tyler pitched a tent that first night. Tyler didn't know it at the time, but this tent would be her home for more than the next month. Can you imagine me trying to sit this tent up by myself one day? <laughs> Long's sister lived in Sedalia. After a few weeks, the two friends decided to move there, leaving behind the only town they'd ever called home. Long moved in with her sister while Tyler built a home in a campground. Tyler lived in this tent beneath this tree on these campgrounds for almost a month. She didn't have a car and she needed to be close enough to town so that she could walk to fill out job applications. Jamie Bethel, the housing director for Sedalia, was distraught when she heard about a homeless woman living in the campgrounds, coming to town every day, desperate for work. I knew that if I did not find her, I would probably not sleep. Um, through the night. Bethel lined Tyler up with affordable government housing and disaster relief. Almost everything in her place was donated by someone in the community. She's a jewel. Yeah. It seemed her luck turned all at once. The same day Tyler moved into her new place, she finally got a call from a local restaurant with a job offer to bus tables. She's very personable with the customers, the kids. She'll take a quarter out of her pocket and go get a kiddo, we have a little candy machine over there and get them little fish or little whatever they want out of the machine. But finding a home and a job can't cure the gaping hole Tyler feels in her life. I think about Joplin every day. Tyler admits she has a lot to be thankful for this holiday season, but says the gratitude can get weighed down. It sounds like there's no skin. We're okay and we're doing better and, and blah, blah, blah. You but are it's, right. But it's hard to feel, to feel good you know, to really feel good when you still feel so bad. About all the people that died, yeah. The guilt of a survivor, the last scar to heal. Caitlin Alexander, KOMU8 News, Sedalia. The sounds of the lake area's bike fest. It's the best weekend we have all year. Sound more like change in the register for local businesses. This is uh, one of the events that we look at being a long-term event to have a lot of growth uh, towards the future. Places like Hooker's Bar and Grill in Osage Beach see sales soar over this festival weekend. I think it's bigger and better every year. Uh, brings a lot of revenue to the Lake of the Ozarks. We really appreciate them all coming down, supporting all the bars here. Organizers say this year will be the biggest yet, expecting 2,000 more attendees than last year. We come down every year and come down and have a good time and do a lot of riding. 
Over the past few years, Osage Beach's revenue spikes considerably in September when events like Bike Fest roll into town. So locals are ready to put up with some ear-splitting sounds, all for the sake of some year-making cash. Caitlin Alexander, KOMU8 News, Osage Beach.